Stand on the foot end of the skid and place your hands under the roll part of the skid. Lift up on the roll section, causing it to unroll in your hands as you lift. Grasp the head end with one hand and move one foot to the side while standing on the skid with the other foot. Reach around the back side of the skid and fold it over your arm. Then reverse roll it against your body and drop it to the ground. Repeat on the foot end and the skid will lay completely flat. Unbuckle all straps and lay them to the sides of the skid. Make a ramp for dragging the patient onto the skid by folding a few inches of the end downward. This will prevent the patient's clothing from hanging up while being dragged onto the skid. Place the foot end of the skid at the head of the patient. Drag the patient onto the skid in line with his spine. If a spinal injury is indicated, use the Oregon Spine Splint or other suitable short device. On the battlefield, there may not be an immobilizer or cervical collar available. This is why dragging the patient in line with the spine is preferable. If the head is near an obstacle, place the head end of the sked at the patient's feet and pull the patient onto the sked. Fasten the leg loops around the patient's upper thighs in the groin area to keep the proper position in the sked. Note for a bilateral amputee, the leg straps are secured together around the patient's torso in order to provide an improvised junctional tourniquet and to keep the patient in the proper position. Bring the shoulder straps over the patient's shoulders and fasten them on the opposite side of the stretcher, forming a cross over the patient's chest. Fasten all cross straps and tighten them. Tighten all harness straps, especially the leg straps. Fasten the foot end straps, making sure to keep the feet inside between the straps. The carrying case for the sked can be rolled up and placed at the foot end or bottom of the sked. This will facilitate patient comfort. Now the sked can be dragged. For a vertical lift, curl the head end of the sked above the patient's head by pulling down on the drag handle webbing. Next, tie it off on the second cross strap below the patient's head using an overhand knot. This will protect the patient from falling debris or small objects. Then, secure the drag handle away so it isn't in the way. Release the triangular screw link from the grommet at the top of the sked and clip it into the hoist winch hook. Before hoisting the sked by helicopter, ensure a tag line is attached to the foot end to prevent litter spin, as all litters can spin during hoisting operations. When hoisting in the horizontal position, pull the head end of the sked up over the patient's head by pulling downward on the drag strap. Tie the drag strap over the second cross strap from the head end in an overhand knot. This will protect the patient. Then pull the horizontal lift slings under the sked and pass them into the one and a half inch diameter round holes on the sides of the sked. Using the provided carabiner, secure the ends of the straps over the patient. Insert the locked carabiner into the hoist winch hook. Inspect all parts of the sked for damage or excessive wear. Replace any damaged or worn parts. Fasten all buckles and straps.
Start rolling the sked from the head end as tight as possible. Use your knee or knees to keep the sked as small as you can. Continue rolling it and when you reach the end, continue rolling over the extended straps until the straps encircle the sked. Fasten the Cobra buckles and tighten the straps.